What's up, friends? Brian Fanzo, Digital Futurist here, and I'm here to talk about, well, based AI, decentralized AI, privacy AI, open source AI, however you want to call it. I wanted to talk about the, the project that you know I, I've been heavily involved in, and I think it's important to kind of take it from conceptual, right, which is like kind of like the, the wild idea that started, you know, well over, you know, a couple of years ago with this team uh, to the white paper that was drawn out um, in February of this year. And then, of course, the test nets, which are currently live leading up to the main net. And it's easy to get overwhelmed, right? We can think about like the fact that this is a ZK LLM and it's FHE with squeezing that gives us 178% more productivity and it's using EVM compatible but that can be extremely overwhelming. And I know like part of my job, like what I do is I translate the geek speak around everything and anything that is technology. And I think one of the things that is extremely overwhelming is this idea of AI, the idea of decentralization, even the blockchain. I, I could argue there's lots of people that trade crypto. There's lots of people that have bought NFTs. There's many people that are that understand the importance of some of like those, you know, those answers things that exist right now in this you know in this web3 market but most of them I would I would argue struggle to understand what are the use cases and then ultimately where does like kind of the the rubber meet the road and that's what my goal is on, on this video is to kind of break down some of the use cases with decentralized AI and of course I'm using the the based AI uh, you know, uh, model as kind of the example, but I think it's important to kind of take a step back and just say it's not just about the the fact that you know there's a crypto component and there's a there's a idea of tokenomics and game theory, but you know there's this idea of where does this all kind of fall into place? And I do think one of the things that based AI is presenting is they're building their own layer one, right? And there's lots of layer ones out there. Why why is this layer one important? And then on top of that. What is the value that that this you know this technology is going to provide? Who are the people and the problems that we're going to solve? And and that's the goal of this video. And I think one of the things that's really interesting about this decentralized AI project is that it's more than just a decentralized layer one AI. There's actually the element of how do we onboard uh, onboard a culture? How do we get people to be our alpha testers, our beta testers, and then ultimately turn our earliest adopters? into our biggest evangelist because that is essential for any technology adoption you need people that are that believe that are that are that that are come together around this technology and what's so unique about this project is that little frog right that little frog known as pepe and Pepe Coin is a community full of early adopters, full of people that believe and live, and, and, and many could argue there it's the intersection of DGENs, meet meme coins, meet artists is, is really what's involved in that community. And so the beautiful thing is you can you can play and understand based without needing to be you know a meme coin person. That was me, right? I fell in love with this project because of the AI technology, much more so than the other side of the, the house. But then on top of that, where like the bigger picture of this is going is that now we have a meme coin that is going to allow us to, not only we already have a culture and a community around technology that is being built. And as this technology rolls out, as the mainnet exists, there are, are there's already this idea of early adopter, adopters, amplifiers, marketers, those that are going to really evangelize the product. And I would argue every tech that exists since the beginning of time would kill as they are coming out of their test net, as they're coming out of early uh, the early stages, to have a, a, a legion of fans that are ready to push this forward. And that's ultimately what the meme coin and the meme coin provide. And of course, there's also this idea that you can stake your, you know, your tokens, your based meme tokens to earn an AI token, right? So there's a lot of people that are in this project that probably would have never touched a decentralized AI component. Component, but because there's the ability to stake their Pepe coin, a meme coin, and earn this this AI, this layer one AI token, well now it's an unlock in that arena as well. And then of course as mainnet launches, there's actually a, a beautiful synergy between the meme coin and how the meme coin burn and what you need to do with the meme coin so that you can own the brain licenses and, and ultimately be a part of this of this bigger based uh, initiative. But that sounds like overwhelming. I know for many of you probably listening, like what does all that even mean? There's too many moving parts. 
And I think this, and actually, hey, let's even blow this up a little bit more. So I think this is actually a beautiful graph. I know Vitalik uh, tweeted it out. I'm not sure exactly where it originally came from, but I think this is such, a, such an important component to understanding where we're going, right? There's artificial intelligence, and I think many of us understand where that's at. And then there's a conversation of blockchain, right? Decentralized, transparent, energy efficient, user monetization, accessibility, right? This idea of what the blockchain offers. But the bigger piece of this is the synergies, that overlap, right? Why is decentralized, decentralized AI so important? Why is this whole conversation happening? Why do we need this? And I've talked a lot about the idea that we need it because we can't fall for the same things that happened in Web 2. But ultimately, here's the beautiful synergies, right? Data ownership transparency, monetization of AI that isn't just a big company or a big brand, right? The idea of cost cutting, the way the way that we're actually funding these projects, competition, the idea that open source allows us to unlock the ability to innovate at scale. And so when you're thinking about like, what does this all mean? This graph summarizes the need for that ownership, that transparency in AI. And ultimately that's where we're going in this whole conversation. So. What are some of the, the, the verticals that you might want to think about when it comes to what this all means? And I'm going to actually touch on these on full videos. I'm going to kind of go through each one of these in a full video. But I want to give this kind of overview, big picture video first. And one of them is finance, right? Finance leveraging in your know, finance industry, being able to leverage a lot of what was in that graph, right? This decentralized component, right? Everything from fraud detection analysis to credit scoring, right? The ability for them to evaluate things in a transparent way and, and uh, be able to do that, even leveraging the privacy opens the, the open source component uh, of decentralized AI. Another one, one that I talk about a lot here is healthcare, right? The idea of personalization of medication. I have ADHD, I take Adderall, right? Part of that whole concept is that I'm able to upload my Apple Watch data, right? I'm able to upload my Apple Watch data, which I currently don't have on, um, that to, to be able to provide you know more customization of my medication but doing so and letting ai help customize that in a public scenario i don't want to give up my data i've already made that mistake with facebook with instagram with what's all these other tools that exist and so that's a big part of this the other one is you know things like task management or even understanding some of the the nuances within the healthcare system being able to use private ai to optimize the healthcare, you know, uh, the, the moving parts within a healthcare system is essential and something today that they can't technically use public AI for. Another one, of course, is supply chain. Not really a sexy one, but one that I think is can be a real vital use case in the sense of item traceability, right? The idea that we can start to understand where we can you know, increase our productivity, where we can optimize across the, the supply chain, but also where we could start to give visibility in the supply chain to consumers, to our partners in, a, in, in, the, in the business. And so these are, these are critical components that today aren't technically using AI because there isn't a decentralized private AI component available to them. And then of course, the, the next one, um, government, public sector. I was a government contractor for a decade in cybersecurity. And one of the things that we, we know that there needs to be more within the government public sector is the idea of transparency, the idea of trust, the idea of in, ensuring secure you know, connection secure, you know, things like voting, right? The, the voting process is a big one. Public re record management, right? Being able to, you know, manage that publicly on the blockchain and be able to leverage and optimize, you know, AI in that arena, which I think is, is essential. And of course, there's other verticals like IT and, and school systems. But what I think the, the bigger picture of this that, that comes down to this when it comes to use cases is decentralizing or open sourcing AI really adds a layer of transparency and trust, but also allows companies, small businesses, medium-sized businesses, large verticals like the healthcare, like the finance, like the supply chain, to take this to the next level and truly use AI. And so by leveraging based AIs, you know, advanced AI models, and, and ultimately being on the blockchain, being built by blockchain devs, businesses can really achieve things in supply chain 
chain optimization. They can do it in efficient and you know cost efficient ways, and they can increase productivity. But they can also do this in a way where they are in control, right? They they understand that their prompts are their prompts, and their data isn't being decrypted on a centralized server, or they're not giving things away to the to the public sector that might be prior, you know, that might be uh, you know their own IP or their own you know intellectual property that they want to take to the next level. And so, when you think about where this is all going, to me, decentralized AI isn't a nice to have. Decentralized AI and, and using you know the importance of AI on the blockchain isn't something that's going to take time for adoption. It's essential for us to scale. It's essential for us to understand that the, that for us to avoid the things that happened in the past with data and information being stolen and our the ability for enterprises and, and big companies to do things that others cannot, it must change. We must change the way that we've done things in the past. And one of those ways is really open sourcing AI, allowing us to have a privacy layer that is open for everyone. is isn't just you know, privacy for those that can afford it, but ultimately privacy for those that want to make their companies more efficient, want to make be more productive with their employees, and ultimately take this entire AI world to the next level. And so stay tuned for some more videos that we'll have on everything based AI as far as each of these use cases, breaking them down. And definitely check out getbasedai.com you'll be able to see all of the amazing things that are happening there and really check out the white paper and stay tuned for the upcoming mainnet until then cheers my friends